The reading this morning is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Morning, everybody. Shall we just pray before we look at God's word? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord our God and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, Anthony reminded us that we are living in a world that appears quite frightening at the moment. And we need confidence that God has equipped us for the world in which we're living. And what we've just been reading says that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. God has equipped us. But if we're to use that equipment, we need to understand it. And we need to know what he has for us. And so, really top of the list here comes the one that we're looking at today. Chosen in him. Chosen in Christ Jesus. Now, Chosen may not be a very good word to some people. It certainly isn't to me. It might bring back memories of school. Choose your teams for sports. Well, I wasn't very sporty, so you can guess who was left to the, the dregs. What about the party invitations that go out to everybody else except you? Or later when you're in the work situation, they've all been out for an evening, but nobody mentioned you going. We can all feel rejected outsiders not chosen so chosen has really negative ideas for us for many of us bad memories and it's not just that but in the history of the church this word chosen has been the cause of people fighting and killing each other christian people because some saw themselves as chosen set up set out, set apart. The elect over time became the elite. And we ended up losing the good news of Jesus. Everybody else except us. Exclusion, I'm in, you're out. And so the church becomes a copy of the world which says, I'm in, you're out. And yet, we can't get away from the fact that Paul's writing here to encourage people, to build them up, to uplift them. And this is first on his list of blessings chosen in Christ. But it's just here as with the rest. We can't read the Bible in texts. We have to read the Bible, all of it, and read it together. And clearly here and elsewhere, there's a simple statement, God has chosen us. Christ says to his disciples, you've not chosen me, I've chosen you. Yes, God has always taken the initiative in the relationships because we can't, we can't just pick ourselves up. We can't put ourselves right by our own efforts. In John's first letter, he says, he admits we love God because he first loved us. But then, does that lead to a kind of fatalism? Well, if you're not chosen, you're not chosen. You're either out or in, and you, and you can't do anything about it. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because the Bible equally clearly teaches that Jesus' invitation is to everybody. Come to me, all 
You are tired of carrying heavy loads. Come to me, all who are tired, and I will promise I will give you rest. Jesus says he came to seek whatever is lost, to seek and to find them, whatever. That word's a really inclusive word, whatever. We're told that the Father is not willing that any should die, be lost, should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Jesus tells us to ask and seek and knock. And if you ask, it'll be given. And if you seek, you'll find. And if you knock, the door will be opened. So we have to keep these together, the idea of being chosen and the idea that we make a choice for God. They're both there. And they come together when Jesus says, all that the Father draws will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I'll never turn away. I'll never turn away. And both Old Testament and New Testament, Paul in Romans quotes from Joel, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who calls will be saved. And that's Old Testament and New Testament quotation. So it's there together. So if that's so, what, what's this choosing all about? What, what, what's it about? Why is it a blessing to us? chosen in Christ well first and foremost folks you're on God's team you've been picked out you haven't been left on the sidelines you're on God's team the weak the foolish the ones on the outside the ones who would never have made it to any team God puts on his team God has chosen. Jesus chose us. How special is that? And when we look more at the passages in which that word chosen comes up, we begin to understand more. Because it, more often than not, it's followed by chosen so that. Chosen in order that. And we see this in 1 Peter. You were a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. But then look at this, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you. So you can go around saying, he's done this for me, he can do it for you. A chosen people, chosen God wants us on his team. And we're there in order that we can shout out, proclaim, tell everyone what our great God has done for us and what he can do for them. We're the people who've been chosen to give out the good news that God welcomes, welcomes all people on his team. You know, James 1 uses a very interesting term when it talks about us as being chosen. James says, we're the first fruits. We've been chosen, we've been raised with Christ, we're the first fruits. Now, Jewish people would understand that straight away. Because when it came to harvest time, and the very first good bits came, you took them as an offering to God. And do you know what? They were a promise of the rest of the harvest that was to come. So we're the first fruits, we're the promise of the big harvest that God is reaping. But what a blessing for us. We get to hand out the invitations to God's party. Isn't that lovely? We get to hand out the invitations to God's party. Do you remember Jesus' story about his banquet? And the first lot weren't interested. They had excuses to make and they didn't come. And the servants, the servants, us, called out and sent out with invitations to anywhere 
the ends of the roads, the ends of the, the street, in the city centre. Bring them in, all of them. Bring them in. We're God's children. And we've been given our part to play in the family, co-workers with Christ, chosen to serve, elected to serve God's plan and purpose in the world. Me? Really? Wow. Chosen in Christ. And uh, uh, that emerges as well in the word that the New Testament selected to use as the word church, ecclesia. Because ecclesia means the called out ones, the chosen ones. They were elected, like, like our counselors, to represent the interests of the people. So the church becomes the called out ones, the ones who are there to represent, to call others, to represent the whole people of Athens as they originally did. So it's really interesting that that word is used for church. But you know, it's sad. The people of Israel forgot at times that they were chosen to be a blessing to the world. They thought it was all about them having a good time with God. God God favored them. They forgot that they were meant to be a light to lighten the Gentiles. But God's promise to Abraham was that the whole world would be blessed through those chosen people. So instead of arguments and fighting over who's in and who's out, that sinking feeling that you had from school, the idea of God's choosing is to give us joy, is to give us joy and confidence, most of all confidence. Jesus chose me. He trusted me with his work. Wow. But we're not at the heart of some exclusive club, gentlemen only, or, you know, no children allowed in here, no dogs, no whatever. We are loved, accepted, forgiven. We didn't and we couldn't do anything ourselves. It was all the goodness of God. So we're on God's team. And we're on God's team to hand out that good news and say, you too can be there. You too can be part of that. And we can say, everybody can come. Look, God even chose me. God even chose me. But we've got to hold together the two ideas. The church goes wrong when it opted for one, the choosing, God's choosing. It's all God's choosing. It's nothing to do with us. And the church went wrong when it, on the other side, it's all to do with me and not to do with God. It's what I decide. I have decided to follow Jesus. I see them, I find it helpful to think of them like railway tracks, parallel lines. You don't join them, but you keep them together and that's what keeps us going. We move on that. We move on God's initiative and our response. So we can stand because we're free to respond. We can stand and sing with joy and with confidence and amazement. Chosen in Christ. God chose me. I'm on God's team. We are chosen. We are cherished. We are beloved children. But not to be smug and self-satisfied and exclusive. But with our Father, we don't want anyone to be lost. But that no one should miss out on that love of God. And the final words in our Bible, in the book of Revelation, in the last chapter, says, the spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty, come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. And in the older version, those are all those, let anyone, whosoever. Whosoever. Chosen but whosoever, keep them. And thank God for what he's done for us. I've chosen, I've, I had, um, just kept coming into mind one of Stuart Townend's songs. Uh, just sit and listen to it, if you would. Have we got it, Sally, please? And it's, 
loved before the dawn of time. Just use it as a prayer to think about what we've been saying. Thank you. Salvation. 